Welcome back, Statistics Scholars. Today we're going to be learning how to use PSPP, the free version of SPSS, to run two different types of chi-square analyses. As a reminder for those following along with my conceptual videos, a chi-square analysis is, can be used for a wide variety of different um, analyses, actually. Um, but for our purposes, we're gonna, we learned about two different chi-square analyses, one called the chi-square goodness of fit test, where we have a single group-based variable, where we try to determine if the number of people within each category is whether or not it's equal or not. That's the one, anal the one single variable, categorical variable analysis we learned about. We're also going to learn to use PSP to do a chi-square test of independence, where we have not one, but two categorical or group-based variables, where we ask if, there's, if the two categorical or group-based variables are related. As a reminder, PSPP is laid out a whole lot like Excel, with the variables as columns and the people as rows. And you can either look at data view or variable view. Data shows you the data of the people. Variable view shows you the nature of each of the variables you've selected. As we've done for most of this series of videos, um, to do a chi-square goodness of fit test, we're going to choose the analyze option. Now, a chi-square uh, goodness of fit test is an example of a non-parametric uh, test. That means not of the mean, because when you have a single group-based variable, for example, um, whether or not someone owns a car is a group-based variable. There is a group of people who own a car and a group of people who do not own a car. And so I, if I ask someone, do you own a car, the answer is going to either be yes or no. That makes it a categorical or a group-based variable. And so any analysis done on this single variable will be non-parametric, not of the mean. That's what parametric means, of the mean. And since we can't calculate an average for something that doesn't have an amount, we need to do a non-parametric analysis, which is what a chi-square is. So to do the goodness of fit test, um, I'm going to click analyze. Then I'm going to be choosing um, the non-parametric option down here. And the type of goodness of fit test we're going to do is to take one group-based variable and ask the question, are there more or less people? Are there fewer or more people within each particular category, which it, within each particular group for that single group-based variable? So we're going to go click Analyze, then ch click Non-Parametric Statistics, and then Chi-Square. Let's just pick um, an example of this. In my data set that I gave to my students, I asked each student whether or not they had a job. And so I have a group-based variable. Some students said they had a job. Some students said they didn't have a job. And I want to know if there's more or less students who do or do not have a job at Pierce College. And I want to know if there's an even split. Now, this is still a null hypothesis significance test. So the null would say, no matter what's happening in your sample, in the population, there is no difference in the number of people in each of these categories. There's not a difference in frequency, the frequency of people that are showing up in each of these two categories. But then, of course, the research or alternative hypothesis would say that there is an uneven distribution of people among these categories. That is, there are either more people that have a job or more people that don't have a job compared to the other category. And that's one kind of test you can do using a chi-square goodness of fit test. So again, I'm going to choose non-parametric. I'm going to click analyze, non-parametric statistics, and then chi-square. This window will pop up just like you see here. You may have to make it bigger by dragging in the lower right-hand corner. And you'll see your list of variables here on the left, as we've seen for most of our analyses. And then you'll decide which variable you want to do a chi-square on. And you'll choose it and move it over. I'm interested in whether or not people have a job. And I've recoded this variable so that anyone with a job has a one and anyone without a job has a zero. Um, because remember, PSPP only speaks in numbers. So I've already gone and done that recoding, job RC, and I've used the toggle to go, this toggle button to move this variable from the left to the right. 
Now, when you're doing a chi-square goodness of fit test, you can actually run as many chi-squares as you want. I could move as many group-based variables over in, into this analysis as I want, and the, uh, PSP people run separate chi-squares. Um, but we're just going to run a single chi-square goodness of fit test. Notice also that I'm telling uh, PSPP that the expected values are going to be that all the categories are equal because that's how you do a chi-square by hand. You compare the observed frequencies that you actually see, the number of people who have a job versus the number of people without, and you compare it to what you would expect to see if the null is true. And in our case, the analysis we're doing, the null says that there's the exact same number of people in each category in the population. And we're going to compare that to what we actually see we actually observe in our sample data set. So you just get, and that's the default. So you're just going to um, uh, leave that right here. You're going to leave it, to leave it uh, toggled on. So we've got our job variable in here. All categories are equal is the expected null values. And then we're going to click OK. You'll see output pop out that looks like this. The expected values, we had 58 people in our data set. The expected values were 29 and 29 because that is what the null would say, that in the population, there's no difference between these groups of people. And so if the null is true, we'd expect to see 29 people without a job, zero, and 29 people with a job, one. But what we actually saw was a, a split of 19 versus 39. And then here is that chi-square, 6.9 for one degree of freedom with a p-value of 0.009. It's labeled asymptotic significance. That's the significance value. And so the p-value is 0.009. That's much smaller than the conventional alpha of 0.05. So we would... Um, reject the null hypothesis. We would say, yes, indeed, we have uh, good evidence to believe that in the population at Pierce College, more students have a job than do not. All right, then. So the next analysis that we can use a chi-square for, and the only other analysis that we cover in my conceptual videos, is the chi-square test of independence. It is also a test where you're only dealing with categorical or group-based variables, but it asks a different question. It says if you have two categorical or group-based variables, is there a relationship between them? That means if you are in a particular category on variable one, does it make you more or less likely to be in a particular category on variable two, where both variables are group-based variables? For those who have watched my correlation video, it's really similar to that because a correlation determines that there's a relationship between two quantitative variables. If being above or below average on one variable makes you more or less likely to be above or below average on a second variable. It's a similar thing here, except now we have group-based or categorical variables. We're putting people into different groups, and we want to know if being in a particular category on variable one makes it more or less likely for you to be in a particular category on in variable two. Like gender, and whether or not people wear skirts in the United States. Generally speaking, if you are a man, you're very low, there's a very low probability that you'll be wearing a skirt. And if you're a self-identified woman, there is a higher probability you're going to be wearing a skirt. It's certainly not certain, but if I tell you that the person who's about to walk into the room is definitely wearing a skirt, you're going to bet money that person is a woman um, because there is a relationship, probabilistically speaking, between gender, that group-based variable, and whether or not people wear skirts. Being a man makes you much less likely to wear a skirt, and being a woman makes you much more likely to um, be wearing a skirt. So let's use PSPP to explore this type of chi-square question, the chi-square test of independence, where you're trying to determine if two variables uh, that are group-based are independent of one another or whether or not they influence each other probabilistically. Once again, we're going to click Analyze. But instead of going down to non-parametric analysis, we're actually going to run something called cross-tabs. So that's a little bit counterintuitive. You'd think it's a chi-square analysis. Uh, I should click chi-square again, but that's not how PSPP uh, functions. Um, to do a chi-square test of independence, we're actually going to create a contingency table, which, again, if you've watched my conceptual videos, you know what that looks like. So, and so we're going to click Analyze, but then to do this chi-square test, uh, chi test of independence, we're going to choose Descriptive Statistics. 
So let's choose a, diff a different research question then. We already know that whether or not someone has a job is a group-based variable. And we already know that having a job is more likely than not. But now I want to know if there's a relationship between whether or not someone has a job and whether or not they're from Los Angeles, because that's another group-based variable. Maybe I think someone who's not from Los Angeles is less likely to have a job, or um, I think there's some relationship between where you're from and whether or not you have a job. That's a different kind of question I can ask. And so I'm going to click Analyze, and then Descriptive Statistics, and then I'm going to choose Cross Tabs. And this, video, and this window will pop up. And using this cross tabs uh, dialog box, I'm going to create my two, I'm going to create my contingency table where there's rows and columns where one variable will be the rows and another variable will be the columns. And I've already said I'm going to choose the job variable and I'm going to choose the LA, whether or not you're from LA variable. And I'll do this the same way I did before, where I have a list of variables to the left, and I can move them over with these little toggle buttons. So here I've chosen the job RC button, and a uh, variable rather, and I've moved it over here to the rows. And then I've cho chosen my LA, and I've moved it over here to um, the columns um, area. So again, if you're going to ask the question, is having a job related to whether or not you're from LA, you're going to put one variable in the rows and the other variable in the, common, the columns, and then, it's then PSVP is going to look within each of these little categories to determine if there's a relationship um, between these two categorical variables. Once I've done that, once I've moved them over, I click OK, and then this output pops up. And let's walk through what it's showing you. It's, it shows you the two variables you're exploring, whether or not you have a job and whether or not you're from LA. And again, I've recoded these so that they have uh, numbers. Anybody who has a job is a one, uh, anybody who doesn't have a job is a zero, and then I've also recoded whether or not people are from LA. If you're from LA, you're a one. If you're not from LA, you're a zero. There are 58 people. Um, I have data on everyone. And this is that contingency table, right? I have six people that are not from LA and who don't have a job. I have 13 people who are from LA and don't have a job. I have 30 people from LA who have a, uh, who have a job. And I have nine people not from LA who, uh, who have a job. So I've got these four little baby groups. And then what PSVP is gonna do is it's gonna create that expected value uh, table. And that is actually all right here as well. And it's going to compare what you observe in your actual data to what you'd expect to see in terms of percentages and frequencies if there was no relationship between whether or not you have a job and whether or not you're from L.A. And then down here, there's actually several inferential statistics that PSVP just automatically ca uh, calculates for you. We are only exploring chi-square, and so that's right here. It's the very first statistic that gets reported. The chi-square is 0.48 for one degree of freedom with a p-value of 0.488. So this is much bigger than the conventional alpha of 0.05. So we would fail to reject the null. And this is how I report it. Chi-square for one degree of freedom based on 58 people was 0.48 with a p-value of 0.488. So greater than alpha, I would fail to reject the null. Essentially, what our data has determined is that whether or not someone has a job appears to be unrelated to whether they are from LA or not. We fail to reject the null. And the nice thing about this output, we have this nice contingency table, is we could actually calculate follow-up analyses called odds ratios, um, but that's not something I cover, so not something I'm gonna go over here. But you could do it with this output. All right, but before I sign off, I'm just going to walk through um, exactly what I went over in PSPP Live, the two different analyses that we did. The first thing I'll show you is a, the chi-square goodness of fit test, looking to see if there are more people with a job versus without, and then I'll go through the chi-square test of independence to see if whether or not you have a job is related to whether or not you're from Los Angeles. So I'm going to click Analyze. I go down to Non-Parametric Statistics, and then the chi-square. This dialog box box pops up. I might right click on this to get those easy variable names for me. I click on the job RC variable and I pop it over there. Um, and then I want all categories equal. That's already 
uh, toggled on for me, and then I click OK. This is the output that I, I then see for that analysis. Voila, as we can see, this is statistically significant. There are, in fact, more people, 39 people. Um, we would, uh, we would uh, use small n here because it's a subgroup sample size, but PSP is a little sloppy. It has big n here. But either way, the total n is 58, big n. Small n for the people who have a job is 39. Small n for the people without a job is 19. And this is a statistically significant difference in frequencies between these two categories. So now I'm going to use PSVP to do the test of independence, where I look to see if whether or not you have a job is related to where you're from. So once again, I'm going to click Analyze. But now I'm going to choose Descriptive Statistics. I know, it's weird. It's counterintuitive. But that's how you do it. Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Cross Tabs. Again, I'm going to right-click to get the easier variable names. I choose Job RC for Rows. Uh, and then I'm going to look for that LA variable I created. Where is that one? Scroll through my list. Oh, there it is. Again, I've recoded these, remember, um, so that PSCP can, can uh, interpret the variables. Um, and then I click OK. And then here then is that output that shows up uh, for uh, this set of analyses. Um, and uh, Let's just move this over a little bit so you can see everything. There we go. Here we have 58 people, as I mentioned. Here's that chi-square test, that chi-square um, value that we could have calculated by hand, but we had PSVP do it for you, for us, of 0.48 with one degree of freedom. The p-value is 0.488. That's much bigger than the conventional alpha of 0.05, so we would fail to reject the null. So in our first analysis, when we just asked, are there more people, in our first analysis, when we did a goodness of fit test, we asked, are there more people with a job or without, we rejected the null. Because again, this p-value is small. And But when we did the chi-square test of independence, where we asked, um, are there... Uh, is there a relationship between whether or not you have a job and whether or not you're from LA, we fail to reject the null. There is no relationship between these two categorical variables. Whether or not you're from LA does not appear to be influencing whether or not you have a job and vice versa. All right, thanks for watching. Um, this is Dr. Jenny signing off.